Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game, back with Oxygen Not Included, and this is a new previewed build is out called the Space Industry Upgrade, and there's a whole bunch of new stuff in here. I want to try to cover it in a short video here. Uh, I'll start with the research tree because there's some small changes uh, with it. Now there used to be down here, um, advanced research used to be kind of over here, and now you can research these first two tiers of research without having to build the uh, supercomputer first. So that's a small minor change. Uh, what else is there? There's a new uh, jet suit, which is probably one of the coolest things they've added to the game. So these things. So under uh, stations, there's a new jet suit dock, and there's also a jet suit checkpoint. So they work similar to exosuits, but in addition to oxygen being fed into them, they also need petroleum. So you got to feed them petroleum. And I'll get the dupes here to... Uh, do some digging here so you can see these guys in action. Let's dig out some of the slime, speed things up for you. And here they come. Now there's a new status bar. They have a third status bar, which is their petroleum. <laughs> Look at them go. So cool. And they're so fast. They don't need ladders anymore. They don't need fire poles. They can just fly around. So that third status bar is their petroleum fuel. They're so fast. Look at them go. Probably the coolest... Probably the coolest thing they've ever, ever added to the game. It's just so quick. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so you'll have to wait till you have petroleum to be able to get these guys going, but... Pretty awesome. Now there's also another way to mine, and that is with the Robo Miner. That's under... I think it's under... Shipping. So this thing... Robo Miner. Only requires 120 power. And I built one over here. I've disabled it. But you can rotate them though. So they have a pretty big uh, mining area. So let's get this one. Uh, let's get this one working here. Oh. Let's, uh. There we go. Speed things up. So they'll mine out the whole area shown in this grid here. And like I said, you can rotate them. So I'll build a new one here. Let's see, under shipping, sorry. <laughs> Getting used to where they are. So let's build another one, maybe up here. There it goes. So pretty awesome. Good, good fast way to dig out the map. There are some issues with it. I, don't, I see it's not actually reaching here and digging this. There might be some bugs with it, but it's still a preview build. So those are pretty awesome. Uh, what else is new? The Molecular Forge. Let's just check that out up here. So there's new materials that you can get in some of the new planets. So in the star map, all these planets near the top start out as question marks, and you'll have to go discover what's at them. But you'll, you'll be able to find these new materials which are used in the uh, Molecular Forge here. So I'll just go from top to bottom here. So the first one, uh, you can make uh, thermite out of niobium and tungsten. So tungsten is a thing we can make already, but niobium uh, comes from one of these new exotic planet planets. And it makes thermite. And I think I have some thermite here. So thermite has an amazingly high thermal conductivity, 220. So this will be really good to make like radiated pipes out of, or any anytime you want to transfer heat quickly. What else do we have got? Uh, petroleum and iso resin makes visco gel, and visco gel is pretty cool. It's kind of like naphtha used to be, and I have some over here. You can build, you can kind of build a liquid lock that's standing in the air. Viscogel is a liquid polymer with exceptionally high surface tension, preventing flow and allowing solid objects to be immersed and removed without disturbance. So that could be a new way to make pretty awesome air locks or liquid locks, but it freezes at minus 30, so you got to be careful. Don't use it in a really cold area or it'll freeze solid and you'll kind of lose the, the wonderful bits of it. So what else can we make in here? We can make... Oh, this is a huge change. So used to be able to make pipes and tiles out of abyssalite and it would have kind of a perfect um, per perfect let's see if we can still make it here no it doesn't let you 
a perfect thermal conductivity. So now you have instead early game you'll have to use something maybe like a, a sandstone but out of insulated pipe. So I've got some different pipes here just to show igneous rock regular pipe has a thermal conductivity of 2 but if you make an insulated one you get it down to 0 0.06. So this early game is probably the best way to make uh, pipes that don't you know leak heat and then later on you might want to use ceramic once you get ceramic and then eventually I know this is great in here but eventually you'll want to use this new insulation which has a thermal conductivity of zero so it's very similar to what uh, abyssalite used to be but now we have to actually make it out of isoresin and abyssalite and like I said isoresin comes from different planets so you actually have to get into space before you can get a perfect insulator which is kind of kind of a pretty big nerf but uh, you should be able to make make way with like ceramic I, I think and then down here we got uh, sandstone we can turn into dirt which could be useful um, kind of a renewable way to get dirt but I'll, there's another way to get more dirt now which I'll describe in a second and finally we got mercury plus fullerene which are both uh, farmed on exotic planets I, th I think we can make a super coolant, which I'll show you down here. So in this container, I've got super coolant. And this stuff's got some pretty amazing properties. It doesn't freeze into a solid until minus, below minus 266. And it doesn't turn into a gas until 436. So pretty amazing liquid. You'll be able to use this to actually uh, cool down uh, hydrogen and oxygen pretty easily. I won't say easily, but with some effort. Uh, and hydrogen, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are used in the uh, new rockets. So I'll just uh, talk about those briefly. So we got a whole, under rocketry, we got a whole bunch of new rocket engines. We got a solid fuel thruster, which can be used kind of to boost your rocket. You build it on the top or somewhere in the middle of the rocket. But we've got uh, we've, petroleum engine is kind of the old one. Steam engine is a new one. You feed it uh, a bunch of steam, which I had in here initially. It's kind of tricky to work with. Um, but you'll have to use insulated pipes once you get some st steam so that it doesn't condense in the pipe. And you can fill up that. And then there's also a new uh, solid fuel thruster, which I don't think I have down here. Oh, it won't even let me build it there. And then the new cool uh, hydrogen engine, which is this one in the middle here. Now I thought this one just required liquid hydrogen to work, but it actually requires uh, liquid oxygen as an oxidizer. So there's two different fuel tanks here. We've got a liquid fuel tank, which is this top one, and then they'll probably ch change the art of it, but we've got an oxidizer tank, which takes liquid oxygen. So I've got my two tanks down here feeding those two. And the rocket is actually ready to go. But I'll just point out some of the other neat things here. We've got, what do we have here? We have the research module. So you're able to collect research in space now. Uh, and that, I think, is all the new stuff. Oh, the sightseeing module. So you can, uh, that's this one right here. You can put a dupe inside here. You're going to need to build a gantry for them to get in here. But you can assign passengers as well, which is pretty amazing. Let's just take a look at space again here. So we've got, if you don't want to be spoiled, close your eyes for a few seconds, but there's some new planets up here. We've got uh, the gas giant, we've got ice giant, we've got a volcanic planet, and you can see some of the stuff we got in here at magma, igneous rock. This one has natural gas and hydrogen, and methane. Now I'm not seeing some of the new materials on these planets just yet. But I'm assuming they're on, they're on these planets because you have to be able to get them some way. Maybe it's on the metallic asteroid. No. So I think maybe I'll do a rocket launch here. I think we got everything ready to go. Joshua's in there. Just have to pick our destination. Maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll go to the metallic asteroid. Let's launch that. Now you can also analyze objects, so you can analyze these. 
destinations. I haven't really played with it a whole lot yet. But you'll definitely want to build your rockets kind of in space because they give off a tremendous amount of heat. Like, look around this rocket. It's uh, 1,400 degrees. The engine's actually pretty cool looking. It looks like a, some kind of ion beam or something. Really cool. But look how hot it's getting. We're getting magma and stuff down here. So if you do it in space, all this hot gas will just dissipate into space really nicely. But if you have it down in this area of the map, you're going to be kind of hosed because things will get super hot and melt. And, and it also gets so hot that the wires actually melt. <laughs> so the wires that you f supply your gantry are going to melt away. So a little bit buggy at this point. And uh, <laughs> before this update, Landing rockets was kind of tricky because I'm just going to seal this back up here. Landing rockets was tricky because it didn't really tell you when they were going to land. You'd have to keep a really close eye on it and then open up the door right before the rocket landed. But now you can actually use these space scanners to sense when your rockets are coming. So you could have a dedicated scanner for the door for the rocket and then send a logic signal to it when the rocket comes to comes back. Open the door, hope there's not a meteor shower, and safely land it. So yeah, lots of new cool stuff with the rockets. Uh, there's a new, this thing here, the Virtual Planetarium. Conducts interstellar research using data from the telescope and research modules. So you can do, I, I think, ex, extra research on the telescope now. And you can also do research in space with that, uh, this thing, the research module. And then I guess you use it or you get the points out of it by using this thing, which doesn't have art yet. Uh, I, I briefly talked about thermite, really high thermal conductivity, but you can see the other properties here of niobium, just some of its data. Fullerene has these properties, and isoresin has these properties, just if you're curious. And mercury in here we have, you can see the properties. It doesn't actually turn into a gas till 356 Celsius, which is pretty pretty uh, high. So what else did I want to talk about? The shovel. There's a new creature. So this guy in here. Mine aren't really acting normally right now. <laughs> it wants to move to here, but it can't. I don't know what's up with that. But uh, they're pretty interesting. What they do is they eat regolith, dirt, or iron ore. 14 kilograms per cycle, and then they'll excrete 500% of that consumed mass. So it's a way of multiplying material. But when they eat it and excrete it, it actually turns into a solid block. So that's why I have this little robo miner here to like, whenever they deposit a solid block, it just mines it back out. So it's a way of getting uh, kind of infinite dirt or infinite iron based, you know, limited by the speed of what these guys can eat. But they're actually, I like their name. It's kind of a play on words here, shovel, shovel. They're actually used and they spawn up in the top of the map. They're used to actually eat and chew through this uh, regolith. Regolith has been a problem kind of up until this point. It would just accumulate and accumulate. So now it's actually, there's a creature to eat it and kind of rebuild the top of the map. And one other minor change down here. They changed the art for the neurovacillator, if I can find it. Somewhere in here. It's still temp art, but it's new. If I can find it. Maybe. I probably scrolled by it and I didn't even see it. There it is. The new neurovacillator. So it looks fairly similar, but it's still temporary, so maybe it'll look even fancier after. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. Uh, cool new rockets, cool new materials, but it's still in preview, so... And the whole nerfing of Abyss Light, we'll have to see how that plays out. But like I said, my favorite thing, Jet Suit Dock, pretty awesome. So hope you found that informative. I'll probably do another video just before the preview comes out if there's any new major changes. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.